Many thanks for joining me this morning on Off the Press, the program where we tell you all about the headlines and try to make sense uh, out of it. This morning with me in the studio to do this, as always, is Ekene Ezeji on a Monday morning. Good morning, Ekene. Good morning. Yeah. It's good to see you here. And you in your yellow sunshine. Yes, all bright mm -hmm. and beautiful. <laughs> Okay, so we shall hit the ground running with the first newspaper, which is The Punch. And it says, PFA's uh, record 1.69 trillion Naira profits from pension fund investment. That story is on page 49. A special fact meeting on 2020 budget holds today. It was postponed. It was supposed to be sometime last week. And that story also is on page 22. Why I airlifted Nigerians from South Africa. Air peace boss. That's Onyema. Uh, find out what he's talking about on page 36. That's where the story is. An ex NHIS boss fails to return 150 naira million vehicles after sacking. Mm. Okay, that's on page two. And the big story faction emerges in ASU. Lecturers attack varsity heads. That's on page 20. Will ensure stable academic calendar, Splinter Group says. And FG has no hand in ASU faction, says Education Ministry. And we have a picture story here of Ekiti communities cut off as flood destroys bridge. And that's the full story is on page 7. Vehicle raced as Kogi APC PDP supporters clash on page 37. And man catches Ogun suspected ritualist with mom's call. Wow. That's on page five. No ethnic group has monopoly to rule Nigeria. Bakari says on page seven. And oh, somewhere there, there is a Mercy emerges winner. Bibi Niger grabs 60 million naira prize on page 22. Mm. Kenny, where do we begin? Okay, let me start with the NHIS boss, the mm -hmm. National Insurance Scheme boss, who mm -hmm. was uh, sacked. And... Um, it's like a form of, do you say anarchy, mm -hmm. where you're sacked, and then even when the new boss sends his men to go and retrieve the five cars that you have in your, why do you have five cars Worth to begin 150 with? million. You refuse to open the gate to them. W what are you telling us? Mm -hmm. uh, we have to <laughs> wait and hear this one, because he was um, laid off by the president himself. Mm -hmm. So is this a protest? What, what is it? Or does he feel he's entitled to this? Is Fantastic. he going to make a statement and say, well, the same as others have chopped, I want to chop my own? Is there something he has to say? Mm. We want to hear it because it doesn't make sense, and I'm glad it's in the headlines. Mm. So. It is in the headlines. So wait in the coming days and see what happens. Yes, I know we'll follow Should it Should he up. respond? Yes. And then the varsity, I mean, I'm sure that's going to feature on several pages. Yes. The it's division in the between the morning. new... Uh, union and the ASU that we know and mm. this union that is yet to be recognized. Um, the case they're making is that they say they want to maintain a stable calendar. calendar. They don't want these strikes. They feel it's, it's hampering the students' development. Um, but someone said rightly this morning, and I agree with them, you know, where were you when these same students you claim to care for so much are lagging behind because of the wrong infrastructure? They don't mm -hmm. have, you know, their, their, they don't have libraries in their schools. They don't have um, the right things to study with. They're, they're, underfunded severely, mm -hmm. it's now you con you're concerned about their welfare. So I, I believe there's more at stake than they want to make out. I'm not sure, and I don't want to imply that they've been paid off, mm -hmm. but it doesn't seem um, like they are looking at the, the, they're looking for the welfare of the students, let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. So, you know, because most of us know that the education system is in a state of shambles. It is. And really needs some severe injection if it's going to resuscitate itself. And we also feel that our education system is really at the heart of our as a nation, resuscitation anyway. Mm -hmm. So we, we all should even be part of ASU really and pushing for more for these students because um, recently I was talking to someone who in the era when our Nigerian education system was notable, when you compare what they had and what we have now, no. it's like night and day, you know, where you have facilities and you can live comfortably and you can think, you know, and, and reflect well. and study and research because the environment is conducive to that, you know, maybe one in a room en suite as opposed to maybe a room for three. In Nigeria, can I? This Nigeria. And, you know, you have your oh. buffet breakfast and you have your laundry being done for you, you have your sitting area. You know, it's, it, it's, you're treated like an elite. This even sounded like you, a fairy tale. You, you can't even recognize it. But these are, this is less than like 50 years ago. And then now you have the same environment, maybe they're even saying, okay, let it house two, maximum four. Mm. And I'm told that you have shifts of 20 people, you know, and then, you know, 10 may sleep and then you go and someone else sleeps. And the, the bathrooms and the state of the bathrooms, I know the punch covered this at mm. some point, you know. Um, 
it's not something anybody should sit back and accept, let alone say, oh, we want to maintain a stable calendar. That's not at the top of it. Because even despite the so-called stable calendar, let's look at the quality of, of the education student, of the graduates you're churning out. Mm -hmm. You know, are they worthy of the name graduates? And, and a lot of people will say no. There's so many questions mm -hmm. around the education yeah. system. So there's more. Really. There's more mm -hmm. at stake than what they're saying. Mm -hmm. But however, I can, looking at it the other way, you know, I heard you saying that, um, where were they when, you know, these students, why did this intervention not come since? But again, it's not too late. It's you not, think it's, it's late? No, but it's just, and my, the only reason I'm challenging them is that they seem to be making, they're making their exit, so to speak. They're coming to the fore and saying we're going to constitute a new mm -hmm. uh, a union. But what is the thing they're pro promoting? They say, well, we don't want any more strikes. But there should be something more you're saying. Mm -hmm. What is it that you're Other saying that. in the interest of the students? Mm -hmm. Why are you showing up now? Are board? you trying to just maintain the semblance of business as usual? Or are you really tackling the issues that are, are fundamental to to the students. Mm -hmm. Let's see how that unfolds in the coming days. You know, uh, ASO says it's not aware just yet. It's, it doesn't know about the splinter group. <laughs> we know there's going to be more conversations in the coming weeks about that. Yes. Uh, so not that I'm saying ASU are beyond reproach anyway, mm -hmm. but yeah. I do understand. Mm -hmm. Okay. So Ekiti communities cut off as flood destroys bridge. You know, th there's been a lot of conversation about flooding before now. You know, I, I remember that um, Nema. Mm. Always they sent a lot of information last month and the previous month saying, yes. you know, Evacuate. we need to pay attention. Mm. But yet nothing happened. And sadly, a whole community is being cut off as a flood destroys the bridge. And that's in a kitty. And I'm just glad seven. that at least our journalists are covering the story. I'm so. bringing it to the fore. Yes, and to because the front it, pages it, you know, it's not too late, like you just said mm. earlier, to do something to mm -hmm. rectify the situation. Um, yeah, it, it ought not to have happened. But mm. seeing as it has happened, what are we going to do to build bridges? Literally, mm, yeah. so that these people are not isolated and you know, furtherly, further disrupted by mm. this. Yeah, because that will have a lot of implication, anyways. Uh, why I lifted Nigerians from South Africa? Do you want to say anything on that? Yeah, I mean, I read his interview mm. um, a while back now, and I liked he seemed genuine in, in his um, and, I, and everybody, most people, I don't know, I haven't met anyone who has disagreed with the mm -hmm. fact that he played a very crucial role at a time when. Our government could not yes. or did not. So, you know, that act of sending uh, airplanes to South Africa to airlift was a very significant, you say, even international statement. Yes, it is. And even those who were airlifted really did appreciate the gesture. Mm -hmm. We in Nigeria felt buoyed by it. And, it, you know, coming just before Nigeria at 59, it was one of the things we celebrated mm -hmm. coming into our independence again and saying, look, some, some people still value the currency of Nigerian you know, reputation enough to say, look, I will sacrifice for these people mm -hmm. so that we can save face. However, when I read the other day that he's now being granted, I don't know if you read that, he now can f do flights to South yes. Africa, which is some people had accused him of you know, trying to position himself for that, and he said he didn't. Well, he never thought of that. I, I, no, I, I, I would like to believe so. you. I'm, 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 still not, I'm still not a <laughs> cynic, so well. I'd like to go with you. But it's, it's still, mm. it still puts a smile on my face to mm. say, well, at least he benefited yes. from yes. his gesture. Yes. You know, and who is he not to take? Take up that offer, mm -hmm. you know. But no, I, I like the fact that he stood out for me at a time when everybody was, you know, unhappy, despondent. Mm. He made a gesture that, which tells us that we can still make those noble gestures. Yeah. We can still turn our attention away from the loss to the wins, and mm. that's what he did. In itself, is a quality statement that he made. I understand he got an award over the weekend. Oh, and really? Yes, and I hope many more. Will Good. Come. And so we'll move to the Nation newspaper also now, where the big story, um, there are lots of stories I can see here. Breakaway, ASU faction, six uh, registration, six registration, five varsities team up. That's on page eight. Um, Mikom Chief Ponle finds love again. Okay, what's ex deputy governor? Find out what this is about on uh, page nine of the Nation newspaper. And again, the whole story of the BB Niger Mercy. Uh, she goes home with 30 million naira and SUV. I thought it was 60 million. No, uh, well, the 60, 60 million, somewhere. I think it's uh, the total. Inclusive of, of yes, the perks. <laughs> all the things that she's getting, the car and other things, 60 mm. million. Where the raw cash is 30 million. Okay. Yeah, so that's on. Um, she got she got uh, 41.77 votes. Okay, that's on page eight of uh, the Nation. And Bayelsa and Kogi 2019. Aoudou's running mate Falake, Falake joins Bedlo. Monarch chief back PDP candidate Diri and PDP APC supporters clash in Kogi. And more on page ten. Now, firm on the probe over to, over 72 billion naira expatriate permit card cash. Uh, that's on the front page, but it's continued on page seven. There's a picture of the governor talking about CBN defense Naira with $8.28 billion forex sales. 
That's on the front page also, but continued on page 7 of the Nation newspaper, already displayed on your screens there. And then we have New Wage Showdown as Workers' Government Stick to Guns. Mixed grill from states on payment. And then we have the pictures of Ngige, Fayemi, and Olaleye. How court aided Mena's arrest on page 8 and Quara to access 1 billion Naira World Bank funds. Uh, Maybe we'll talk on the minimum wage. But okay. please remind me to talk on the toll gate <laughs> in case we forget. Um, I, I don't know if you read it in the previous newspaper. But not yet. Whenever it shows up. Okay, not we, yet. We, we yes, it's in, the next, it. it's in the next one. <laughs> Vanguard has got it. We'll go there. <laughs> yes, I mean, the minimum wage, we're still here. We know that the bill was passed in April. Mm -hmm. And then in August, apparently, some were being paid. And now we hear that what is holding things up is really that they're, they're, they're trying to determine the percentage of increments on those who are above the minimum wage, mm. just slightly above. And uh, I think they are pitching it. The government are saying they won't go above 9%, whereas the Labor, uh, Nigerian Labor Congress are saying, no, it has to be between 24 and 29. You can mm. see the gap is significant. Yes. You're, you're talking about more than 10% uh, between them. Um, it, it's, it's a difficult one, and I'm a bit sad, because I thought all this time we were negotiating before the elections. Yeah, I put thought this in such, consideration. Yeah, such issues were in the footnotes. So why would we, after now, we're still talking of threatening Come strike again you know um, apparently the senators or the lawmakers have teamed up with with the admin you know the executives to say we are on their side and all that but I don't think they're the ones to talk because mm. we're still not happy that they're pushing for 5.5 billion yeah. in in a uh, jeep purchases so um, everybody needs to understand that if people are saying that their living conditions are not adequate and they're asking for money up front it's something to be looked at even if you don't give them the cash you know, just whole. Mm. You can look at other ways to ameliorate. To make it happen, yes. there, because it's doubtless we all know that conditions are hard for everybody. So if you want to avoid people feeling like they have to look for underhand ways, the same way you have padded your income as mm -hmm. a government, you need to look to them as well and say, look, these people need to have living conditions mm -hmm. that are comfortable enough so they can face the work at hand. So you it. may not give them upfront cash, but find other ways: housing allowance you know, transport allowance, mm -hmm. you know, uh, bills. Healthcare. What the, yeah, healthcare and things because that make life to, take care of all to of motivate this. them to actually mm. face the work because these are your foot soldiers. They're the ones that will do your errands. True. Mm. Okay, so, sorry, I just slightly missed this and I, I thought to read it. First Nigerian to appear on TV, Kunle Olashope dies at 81. I don't know him anyways. Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe that also, uh, when you were talking about Diana 81, I remember mm -hmm. the one you t talked about, the, the couple who found love. Oh, uh, yes. Uh, Ponley. Yes. Yeah. I, it's, it's a bit sweet. I, I guess he's, he's a notable character, but the, what struck me about the story is that he's in his 70s and she's also, she's going to turn 71, oh, the wow. ex-governor, and he's 76, I think. Hmm. So, you know, it's not, it's, even in the midst Love of everything, people happen. are still discovering <laughs> happiness. Themselves. Yeah, so you hmm. never shut the door and on, on the possibility of finding love. So I guess okay, it's, so it's congratulations. a romantic story. <laughs> congratulations <laughs> to them. And then, of course, hmm. uh, the Ola Shopemi here also rest in peace. Uh, so, and that will be it here. Okay. Yeah. We're going to move oh, on wow. to the one we are all waiting, both waiting <laughs> for, and it's the Vanguard newspaper. Mm. So, why we oppose return of toll gates? Okay. Labor, government must reduce price of fuel first. ULC is saying, and Nigerians should resist plans to tax GSM calls. Okay. And then NECA calls for caution, efficient policies. All of these big stories defined on page five of the Vanguard as would be displayed very soon on your screen. And ASU splits as new academic union emerges. We are not threatened, says ASU, and that's on page eight. External reserves plunge to 20 months low, and our leaders not ready to sacrifice. That's according to Morgalu. you find that story on page 44 in the Vanguard. And level playing ground crucial by airline operators and other stakeholders. On page 42 and 43, pages 42 and 43 of the Vanguard, you get that story. And then we have a, a word, don't adeboye to Shibajo, don't be faced by gang ups against you. That's on page 9. And no epidemic in Queen's College, that's according to LASG, and that's on page 10. Bakari tax Bukhari on insecurity. On page 11, he had the State of Nation uh, broadcast yesterday. Mm. Uh, so insecurity, recruitment of 10,000 policemen flops as uh, Police Service Commission and IGP Bika. That's on page 41. Asset declaration, level of compliance not encouraging. That's according to the Code of Conduct Bureau, CCB. Okay.
I can understand with the big story. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 let thoughts? me start by saying, in case it seems like I'm coming at it from uh, one predictable perspective, mm -hmm. nobody is really against tax or tolls per se. Mm -hmm. Um, the reason we are reluctant to see any more increment in taxes or tolls is because we haven't we seen see what has yields. been done with the previous tax yes. or tolls. What we see is wastefulness. We see people indulging themselves, which links me to the Mogalu, because uh, I read mm. a bit about that. Okay. You know, you, you don't want to sacrifice. You don't want to lead by example. You want to live it's a really life crucial. that is Leading lavish. You want to example. drive around in jeeps because the roads are so bad, so mm. that you don't have to don't feel, feel the, the, the bumps. Yeah, but you want us to still pay for the same roads that despite having paid in the past, we haven't seen you do what is necessary. A lot of times when we're stuck in traffic, which saps your energy to be productive of at course. work, is because the roads are bad in mm. parts. You know, I, okay, there, there's a high volume of cars also on the roads, but if the roads were better, then people would be able to move more freely without mm -hmm. having bottlenecks. And so it's be essentially what we're saying is that we don't trust you with the money you already have, let alone adding, adding more to not, it. Yeah. So Asking really what we more. should be looking at is more transparency in terms of showing us what you've done with the money, being more um, creative with the money you have. You know, so people can trust you. you, you know, this is money people have worked for mm -hmm. and they're giving it to you on trust. You need to show that you're, up, you're, you're, you're worthy of that trust. So, Let's see what you've done with the money so far. Let's see you sacrificing, as Mogalu says, mm. you know, going without a, an entourage, a siren, and, I know. you know, slashing one of That's the senators almost recently. almost impossible. Yeah, a headline I saw over the weekend that I had to look again and say, is this a new breed? He said a senator was suggesting that they slash the legislatures by, legislature by 70%. Uh, mm. And if he can say that, he's saying that from an informed position. Mm. It means that 70% of the people there are not necessary under these conditions that we're living in. So I want, we want to see you lead by example, mm. make some cuts in your mm. own budget, and show us how you're spending the money you already have. Then we'll and be then you'll be surprised how quickly people will pay their taxes. Yeah. And you know, um, we've already, we're paying tools as it is. Mm. Let's see what you're doing with, with the tools. Because you're the truth of the matter is that if we see results, you, you will not need to force people no, you because wouldn't. you know where your money is Because they now know into. that they are beneficiaries of mm. what they're paying for. But as it is, we're not benefiting and you're asking for more. So no, I think um, we need to go back again to the drawing board. Let's dial back, as people say, mm -hmm. and let's start by giving an account of, of their stewardship. The ones we've done in the yeah. past, where, where has all the money gone to? Yeah. Bakari had a State of the Nations uh, broadcast yesterday, and then he said he'll be happy to see um, some of the positives. He said he'd like to see move to 2023 is, uh, you know, the fight against corruption and insecurity. So, but you'd like to see the fight against Yes, Russia. you know, to, to see it continue even up to 2023 and moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, in a way, people don't... Uh, also, I'm curious, in what capacity was he having the State of the Nation as a prospective president? Because mm -hmm. I need, he okay. needs to make his position clear. Mm -hmm. Is he campaigning by stealth? He should let us know. He shouldn't be ashamed to say, I want to be... I mean, he has said it in a manner of speaking, but he sort of pulled back a bit. And yet he's still making headlines. Mm. In what capacity is he speaking? Because to you us? remember he had said that the video that went viral mm. sometimes. It some was just him ago. expressing his wish. Yeah, and it was from last a year and seven months. But mm. this is a very recent one. Exactly. Why so in what capacity are you coming to us now? Are you mm. coming to us as a prospective candidate for twenty twenty three? Just as a man of God. Mm, in, which case, <laughs> in which case, I may not, I may not necessarily say that you are entitled to say. Uh, well, and let me not say everybody. Mm -hmm. It's a democracy. Say what you want to say. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I mean, it, w the statement is made. In a way, anybody who comes to power in 2023 will not have any choice but to continue to fight corruption. Uh, as many prospective governments have said they're doing, what we want to see is how. Are you doing it in a different way to what has been done? Mm -hmm. Because we got excited when the current administration came in on that mandate. That yeah. was one of their sole, you know, promises was fight corruption and security. And yet, in spite of that, we're yet to see wins. So the, the regular questions people ask are the monies you've confiscated and you've put out there in the media space, what are you doing with them? Metal. Where are they? How are they playing into mm -hmm. our, our finances? So we need to see more, a, a bit like the tool and, and, and taxes, more accountability so that people will be reinforced, their also. confidence will be you know, buoyed and they'll say, yes, this person is actually following through on their promises. So if President Buhari, whose main mandate was corruption, cannot mm -hmm. really show enough for us to feel buoyed. I'm not really sure what anybody else can do mm -hmm. unless they think outside the box and say, look, this is a, another way we're going to tackle maybe it new that strategies. hasn't been done. Yeah, and mm -hmm. this is another way we're going to carry you along so that you feel that this is this fight, this is the fight that we can win. So I, I think it's just um, 
pontificating. Okay. Mm. So, um, yeah, did you hear the story of no epidemic in uh, Queen's College? Last week there was back and forth, you know, some people saying it's an epi epidemic, the school say, you know, it's just a breakout of some sort of flu. But anyways, they've come out to say it's not an epidemic, but they had up to 70 children or so students, so to speak, had to go home and some in the sick bay. But we hope that does not return and it's taken mm, care yes, of. Yes, it would be good to mm -hmm. identify what exactly they're it suffering is. from. Yeah, because if it's something to do with hygiene, which is what immediately comes to mind, mm -hmm. then it's something that's preventable. And that and has happened in the past, actually, mm -hmm. when there was a certain airborne kind of related... Yeah, so it's something they can prevent. Big. So let's. I'm sure even now they're looking into it whilst trying to douse any controversy and avoid people... You know, but of course, it out you of know proportion. that the parents would have gone very quickly as of possible to get their children. Yes. You know. Yes. Okay, so I think it's basically the same thing here uh, that we've got. I know on the previous headline, you, uh, someone said that um, the po political, the presidency is not the um, prerogative or the of a I section. Think, uh, it's the, also Bakari. Okay, so he said it in his. That, it, 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 okay. Yes, it's part of what he was talking about that he gets on him when uh, people say it's zoning section. it to. I yeah. mean, again, you have to agree with him. Nonetheless, I mean, the discussions on both sides, which you're sympathetic to. So one side of the argument says, well, a certain group, the Southeast have been marginalized since the Civil War, and apart from the Vice President, we haven't really seen a representation of the Southeast at mm -hmm. the top level, even though clearly you have capable candidates like Mogalu who put himself of forward. Um, however, you know, I would not, despite the fact that I would like to see the scales rebalanced, I feel it's also important how you go about it. So zoning, I've never been a fan of zoning, because mm -hmm. I feel it's somehow you're admitting to the fact that you cannot look beyond your tribal um, interests and I feel we need to move away from that towards a more united I know it it seems like I'm speaking something you know from my mind but mm -hmm. we need to we, we have no choice if we're going to remain as a nation we need to start looking beyond those tribal divides so what I would say and I, what I, I imagine some other people have proposed is that just create a level playing field mm -hmm. and you know especially in the way we go about now we're going towards 2023 rather than seeing posters of you know, I know. The, the same old faces what, kinds of what we want to hear is what are INEC doing to make the election election process more transparent. We want electronic voting. You know, we want a system that isn't so heavily dependent on money to register yourself as a candidate so younger sure. candidates can come through. We want more screening. Again, and that's your... a very crucial point you yeah. just mentioned. Sorry to take it out. No, please you know, do. Like when you talk about, because I, I do believe when we talk of young leadership also, there are a lot of young people, or even not, you know, let's not even go there, but there are a lot of people who are capable, but they just can't because of, you know. The hurdle, the, the financial yes, hurdle. So you now go and uh, adopt a godfather who mm -hmm. then controls you. So you're back in the same old game. So you want to free them from that. And then instead, raise the bar when it comes to, you know, qualification qualifications such as academic yeah. qualifications and even your track record what have you done Wealth leading up to now that shows that you can mm -hmm. you can hold the fort so that's what we're looking for now we want a greater screen we want the right kind of people you want to make it con and then maybe reduce the money attraction for the, whether the legislature or you know the, you know, the judiciary are still struggling to get money but mm -hmm. you know those who seem to come in there and flock there because it's a money making scheme for them Try and it, take it away that incentive. Even hardship allowance. Yeah, take away that incentive. So you know, so like other countries like UK, where they barely earn anything and they're not professional uh, politicians, they have a job and they come to serve. Mm -hmm. Make it conduce. And we know how to it's do this. Where we, it's, it's not rocket science. We know how to to create an environment that attracts the right kind of people if we're serious. But it seems as though the small units of people who are there mm. are able to hold us hostage because they like the way they're circulating yeah. money among themselves to such an extent that the ex and I hate NHIS is yes. holding on to five cars mm -hmm. as if it's his what, prerogative. Yeah, it's his right, it's his takeaway. <laughs> and so gets... we, need to, we need to break away from that. Oh yeah, mm. and so we have uh, this day, uh, today we don't have complete sports anyways. Mm. We have uh, this day newspaper also up for review and FG to demolish uh, MMIA terminals as new one begins operation in December. Mm. Workers wow. reject concession plan. That's on the front page uh, as displayed already, uh, but you find that story continued on page five of this day newspaper. Communication tax will increase taxation burden, says Afri Invest. And that's on page eight. I think it has to do with the tax on uh, calls. And um, we are discussing with bandits to end violence in Northwest, says Masari. To meet Maradi Governor Omoru, Nigerian Nigerian security officials meet outlaws tomorrow. Outlaws leaders tomorrow. Fire me calls for multiple approaches to security, law enforcement, reform of police, and all that. And we have a consensus in National Assembly over non-payment of 8.1 billion severance benefits. 
clerk denies lodging allowance in interest yielding accounts. That's also on the front page there. But it's continued on uh, page five. 93 hearty chairs, and that's uh, during the club's 93rd anniversary lecture. We can see pictures of fire me uh, and others there. Ambakasi Deep Sea Port to go up $2 billion, says Commission. And that's about what we have mm. on this one. And of course, behind is uh, Confucius and China's 600 uh, Polytechnics. And that's a, a columnist there. But I can never mm. come back yes, to this. Yes, I started reading that article. I hope to go back to it. Okay, it's fascinating. we'll come to it. But I, just two things I, want to, I don't want to forget. So I'll just quickly go back to the headline you mentioned earlier. Um, that Adeboye was advising, or, or rather encouraging Oshibajo, Oshibajo not to get intimidated by. Mm. And, and for me, oh, that's, that's, that's confirmation. Around, that's confirmation. Because all along, we've been saying that there's a witch hunt, there's subterfuge and smoke screens all mm. going on around this whole Oshibajo thing. But people have said, no, 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 you know, we're blowing it out of proportion. There's really nothing going mm. on. But now, to have his mentor mm. make that statement, it means that, and make it in a public forum, it, it's also strategic, I think, because yeah, he could have sure. told him privately and it wouldn't have And hit. nobody would know. Well, yeah. But we know everyone. because we, maybe he wants us to know. Mm. And, and he wants, uh, but I have to commend Ushiba Joe because his posture since this so-called- He's been quite civil. Very, <laughs> very dignified. Mm. And if anything, he's going about, his, and recently there was, uh, I think he was at a conference at the Lagos, somewhere, one of the uh, clubs, and he seemed to be, putting his foot for uh, voting or advocating for restructuring of sorts. He was, apparently was careful to pick his words, mm -hmm. um, but he was basically saying, look, we can't have a successful unit if the, 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 fed, the units are surrounding them, the states are not strong, equally mm -hmm. strong. Um, so it may be that now he's decided that, look, if you're coming after me, I might as well say what I really yeah. believe. I might as well actually make a statement, mm -hmm. take a stand, because all this time people have accused him of being a bit too subservient or even too docile or quiet, knowing the kind of person he is and the intelligence he has. Mm. Um, but now maybe he's decided, look, I'm just so, I think he's someone to watch in the days and months to come because um, maybe his, his final standoff is, is, is yet to come. Here. Yeah, and then um, also, of course, the issue of dialoguing with bandits. We're not for it. I We're know, not for any I? such, because it sends out the wrong signal. Mm -hmm. and, and even there were conversations to the effect that even if you dialogue with the kingpins, because those are the ones you're engaging, the ones who have made their money, their, they call them the pot-bellied you know, bandits. You have a, a generation behind them saying, okay, you can settle those ones. But, but we are here. We too will get, get our own and then you can settle us. So you're, you're basically you in in, that way. You're inspiring a culture of kidnapping mm -hmm. as a way of life. So you need to take a stand. Unless you're feeling guilty, which you should, that part of the reason they're where they are is because society is the way it is because you haven't put things in place for to you know deal with issues of unemployment poverty education and so you have young people who are looking for ways to make it yes and, and that's where they're going to all right many thanks Akene, for coming on this morning and that's where we'll be wrapping it on off the press this morning we'll do this again tomorrow the same time here on plus tv africa i am amaka okoye